Father in heaven, we bow before you this afternoon and we are clinging to the promise of Deuteronomy 33 and verse 25. As your days, so shall your strength be. We thank you for that promise. We believe it. We now claim it. Be with us now throughout this midday power surge is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Greetings. Salutations. Welcome to this Midday Power Surge, Tuesday, December 28th, 2021. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Say to Surf International, first-time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this Midday Power Surge. It's my prayer that you grab hold of that promise in Deuteronomy 33, and verse number 25, and may that be a source of strength as we go throughout our daily crises. My friends, we are one step closer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are one step closer, brothers and sisters, to the close of human probation, the enforcing of a national Sunday law. We are one step closer. It's a possibility that we might die before those great two events, may we be found faithful in these last days. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to share with you that there is a grand movement afoot, and it is a counterfeit movement. Let's get right into it, brothers and sisters. Here we have it. This is actually... This is actually, brothers and sisters... A movement called The Return. Yes, my friends. And they have an upcoming event called The Renewal, set for January 8th, 2022. Kindly, take a look at this actual video, brothers and sisters, because they're calling for a spiritual solution to solve America's crisis. Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. Four hundred years ago, our forefathers left their land. They came as pilgrims and strangers with a divine purpose and signed a covenant with God on the Mayflower, which birthed a nation celebrated by past generations. And though we have broken the covenant they made with the Almighty and we face judgment, their legacy lives on. Join us on January 8th, 2022, as we recovenant our nation back to God. We, the people of God. All right, brothers and sisters, have you ever heard the phrase that says the half has never been told? Well, brothers and sisters, based on what they are building upon, the Mayflower, the Pilgrim, that movement from the old world into the new world. I'm going to share with you what actually took place with the pilgrims who came to America. Brothers and sisters, again I say, with no uncertain terms, the half has never been told. Watch this carefully. All right, brothers and sisters, now take a look at what they're actually stating, that America, cop 
of iniquity is almost full. And as a result, they stated, brothers and sisters, it's time for Americans to renew the covenant the pilgrims made with God. Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. There it is on the screen. At a time when America's cup of iniquity is nearly full. So what are they now state stating? This coming January 8, 2022, it says that actual convention will be a faith-focused day of heritage, history, praise, worship, and prayer dedicated to the American renewal of the covenant the pilgrims made with God. All right, brothers and sisters. All right. Do you know which book will show us the whole history of the pilgrims from the old to the new world in, in the Americas, even the even in North America, it is about the great controversy, brothers and sisters. And I believe this is the book of the hour. Look at this. I'm going to simply touch on a few points here. It was the desire for liberty of conscience that inspired the pilgrims to brave the perils of the long journey across the sea. All right. Last sentence. The freedom which they, the pilgrims, sacrificed so much to secure for themselves, they were not equally ready to grant to others. I wonder what they did. Read on. The regulation was adopted by the colonists that only church members should have a voice in the civil government. A kind of state church was formed. Let that sink in. It was not long before these measures led to the inevitable result. And what was that, brothers and sisters? That was persecution. And this is the organization that is called the return. This new movement, the renewal. This is what they're basing their movement on. Brothers and sisters, remember, history always repeats itself. Let's move on, brothers and sisters. It says, 11 years after the planting of the first colony, Roger Williams, do you remember him, came to the New World. Like the early pilgrims, he came to enjoy, he came to enjoy religious freedom. But unlike them, do you see it, my friends? Yes. And it was Roger Williams who was the first person in modern Christendom to establish civil government on the doctrine of the liberty of conscience. And that was not what the pilgrims did when they came. Let's move on, brothers and sisters. And this is speaking about uh, Roger Williams. What happened, my friends? They actually persecuted Roger Williams. Let's read that. Attendance at the services of the established church was required under a penalty of fine or imprisonment. Roger Williams reprobated the law. That's it. Blue words. No one should be bound to worship or, he added, to maintain a worship against his own conscience. And this is the movement that is on foot right now, brothers and sisters. And of course, they banished Roger Williams. And what did he establish? The little state of Rhode Island, brothers and sisters. Let that sink in for a moment there. Very, very important for us to understand where we are in this time of history. Are these points clear, brothers and sisters? I hope so. And that's why we are told, brothers and sisters, this movement... The renewal, January 8, 2022, they are now saying that America, Americans have broken their covenant with God. And it sounds good. It should receive a round of, of applause. And as a result of breaking their covenant with God as a nation, God is now sending judgments upon the land. Take a look at this, brothers and sisters. There it is. America has broken the covenant made by our forefathers. Mm -hmm. This has brought our once blessed nation under the judgments of God. Next paragraph. Then they wrote the fires, the plagues. Could that also reference pestilence 19 and variants? And everything we are seeing. Yes. 
These are judgments of God. Second sentence, the renewal. January 8, 2022 is a reconciliation and restoration of the covenant, which is part of returning to God. It is the next step. Watch this now. I believe after this renewal step that the revival is coming. Brothers and sisters, are we not told that Sunday is going to be enforced as the law of the land to combat calamities? There it is, brothers and sisters. Great controversy. Page 590 confirms. I hope you're seeing this, my friends. We are here. And Laudato Si, page 237. This is the crisis that we are now in, brothers and sisters. <laughs> and yet, people are saying, we have much more time before the coming crisis. My friends, the renewal this movement is now uniting various a plethora of religious leaders hmm, to combat immorality in America. And again, the movement sounds plausible, brothers and sisters, but we know the undercurrent is tending towards the enforcement of a national Sunday law with persecution for God's commandment keeping people. Look at this, brothers and sisters. There it is. The renewal is uniting leaders all around America. Globally, my friends, that's where we are. And what are we told as a result in great controversy? Page 444, once they unite, brothers and sisters, we are told that they will influence the state. And that's what they would do next, my friends, to enforce their decrees. Yes, sustain their institutions. And one of their institutions is Sunday rest by law, Sunday worship by law, brothers and sisters. <laughs> That's where we are. And then will come persecution for God's commandment keeping people. By the way, if you go to the website, you will actually see the prominent figures, the prominent speakers, the movers and shakers. And my friends, a large number of them are individuals who are now advocating church influencing the state to combat America's ills and crises. As a matter of fact, I'm going to point you to something. Look at this YouTube channel. There is a playlist that is called Death of Protestantism and Republicanism. It's a playlist, a series of studies several months ago. And I covered Michelle Bachman. I covered David Barton and others. And these individuals are the prominent movers and shakers. There it is, brothers and sisters. All right. Hmm. Michelle Bachman, that's it. David Barton. All right, friends. And you have others, Mike Lindell and Cinder Powell and others. That's it, brothers and sisters. I'm not sure how much clearer it can be for those who need to see where we are, my friends. And in the write-up for this return, the renewal, they actually stated that there were only two nations throughout history that made a covenant with God. They mentioned Israel and they mentioned the United States of America meaning the pilgrims, brothers and sisters, they are the ones who have connected America's present condition and future actions with what transpired with Israel, especially at the first advent. You wait until I share with you. Watch this, brothers and sisters. Throughout history, only two nations, there it is, my friends, who have been tied together by covenants with God. They mentioned Israel and they mentioned America. Well, take a look at this. What are we told in John chapter 11? Verse 47 to verse 53. In order to preserve their nations, what happened, my friends? They crucified Jesus Christ. Verse 48. That's it. In other words, here's the point, my friends. Don't miss it, my friends. Don't miss it. In other words, they saw that there were threats to their well-being as a nation. And they were inspired by Satan 
to destroy, to crucify Jesus with the understanding that that would preserve their nation. But what happened as a result? Mm -mm. It brought the destruction of their nation. AD 34, the close of their probation. AD 70, the utter destruction of Jerusalem with its temple and people. And today we see something very similar. The, re the return movement, the renewal movement, Oh, the calamities, immorality in America. What can we do to preserve our nation so God will stop sending judgment? Do you know what they would do? They are going to transgress God's Ten Commandments by influencing state leaders to enforce Sunday worship by law and to persecute all of God's commandment-keeping people, Sabbath-keeping people, Bible dissenters of Christ. That's it, my friends. You remember a statement in Great Controversy, page 22, which says, the great sin of the Jewish nation was the rejection of Christ? Well, the great sin of the Christian world will be the violation and trampling on the foot God's Ten Commandments. Are you ready for this? Great Controversy, page 22. There it is, my friends. The great sin of the Jews was their rejection of Christ. The great sin of the Christian world would be their rejection of the law of God. The foundation of God's government in heaven and earth. Terrible blindness. Strange infatuation, brothers and sisters. Yes, yes, yes. And I want to say this. They, are, they were individuals who were among those who desired and, and clamored for Barabbas and uttered crucify Jesus. But many of them did so ignorantly. They were deceived by their leaders. Don't misinterpret what I'm about to say. There might be a few individuals among the movement, the organization, the return, the renewal. Yes, brothers and sisters, who are calling for church influencing the state to bring back morality in America. It sounds good and plausible. And it, it is good, but not that way, my friends. No, no, no. Let me continue. And to stop the calamities. Yes, my friends. And many of them would do so ignorantly, calling for Sunday worship, Sunday rest by law. But guess what? God is going to have his people, his ministers, his messengers, his Bible workers, his uh, medical missionary evangelists to lead them from error into truth look at this statement brothers and sisters acts chapter 3 confirms that verse 14 yes you denied the holy one you desired for barabbas it's right there brothers and sisters you killed the prince of life verse 17 blue words you did so in ignorance verse 19 now repent and become converted that your sins may be blotted out so brothers and sisters what they are over there calling for repentance and revival and reconciliation and reformation. That's the very, the very R's of their movement. We should be calling them to true Bible repentance. And by the way, they want to vote out these civil leaders who they say are very diabolical. They're very uh, progressive in their policies immoral in their policies but remember brothers and sisters the civil leaders of america are simply the representatives of the people so if you want change you don't start with the leaders begin with those who voted them in amen to that brothers and sisters amen to that but no that's not what they want to do because they have tried that before and they have failed miserably do you know why because they are preaching a diluted gospel that's it. You can be sinning until Christ comes. The law has been abrogated, nailed to the cross. At the same time, now they want to clamor for the Ten Commandments. Do you see how deceived they are? They have a, a tame message, a dull spiritual sword. All right, by the way, clamoring for the Ten Commandments, the same movement, let me move on, they're renewed. They're renewal. Do you know what they are 
calling for the return of prayer and Bible in public places, in public institutions, government-run institutions. That's what they're calling for. Establishing and setting up the Ten Commandments in public edifices. Look at this, brothers and sisters. There it is. We also need to return prayer and Bible reading to our educational systems. Yes, and proudly display and teach the Ten Commandments. Yes, this year of 2022 is going to be a cleansing year. And then they wrote, America has been given. That mandate. <laughs> yes, that mandate. And if there is going to be repentance and renewal, they say, my friends, America should be the leader. America should be the leader. And what came to my mind is a statement, oh yes, my friends, in the spirit of prophecy. It clearly says, my friends, America will lead out for the enforcement of sunder rest by law. Here it is, brothers and sisters. Maranatha, page 214. That's it, my friends. How, how many more signs do we need to understand? The close of probation is right upon us. I'm telling you, my friends, you know what? I want to say something before I forget. All right, friends, and it's very, very important. I believe since this uh, renewed renewal movement is based on the pilgrims coming to America and establishing America, I believe we should all take that book, The Great Controversy, and hand out that book to as many people that will take it, January 8th, 2022. Amen to that, brothers and sisters. And if we can also highlight the chapter entitled, The Pilgrim Fathers. Yes. You know what? By God's grace, I'm going to put that together. A pamphlet simply on that chapter. I believe it's chapter 16. Don't quote me on that. Look at the book. Those of you who are alive, you have your book, Great Controversy. Is that chapter 16? All right. By the way, let me move on. All right, friends. And if you can, get that pamphlet, even in digital form, and email it. Send it to individuals that you know. Because this movement, it is spreading across continents. I'm going to shut up with you right now. It's a global movement, my friends. That chapter, yes, my friends. The, the Pilgrim Fathers, it's due to the world, America, it's present truth for this hour. And give them this as an appetizer with the book Great Controversy, the full meal, the full course meal. Yes, you know what? Just stay tuned by. Keep us in your prayers, my friends. It's time, has been time, for aggressive, effective evangelism now. This movement, I believe, is a counterfeit revival movement. And we're told in the book, Great Controversy, and in the Bible, the counterfeit will always precede the genuine. Look at this, brothers and sisters. There it is. The renewal is part of a global movement of prayer and repentance spreading to all continents. That's it. Blue words. It began in America. September 26, 2020, in Washington, D.C. All right, friends. And remember, that's it right there. The renewal, they say, is a spiritual solution to the current state of affairs in the land. I want to ask you a question. What will be their spiritual solution? Based on the Bible, we are told it's going to be Sunday rest, Sunday observance, Sunday worship by law, with persecution, of course. For all dissenters, let's get back there, my friends. There it is. Repentance, reconciliation, restoration, revival, reformation for the faithful remnant. Remnant to usher in the mercy of the Lord. Remnant. It's a counterfeit movement. There it is, my friends. Great Controversy, page 464. There it is. What are we told, my friends? Satan will endeavor to prevent what is coming, the true revival, by introducing a counterfeit. 
the counterfeit is here, brothers and sisters. But even though the devil will bring a counterfeit, God is going to use his messengers who receive the unction of his Holy Spirit, lattering power, brothers and sisters, to call people out from Babylon. I hope you caught that, brothers and sisters. This is the message for the hour. And I want to say this, from, from scriptures, can we prove the counterfeit will precede the genuine? Yes, we can. In the time of Elijah, when Jezebel and Ahab united church and state union to persecute all dissenters, what are we told, brothers and sisters? Hmm. That they attempted to slay Elijah, but God protected and preserved his servant and when elijah showed up three and a half years later first kings 18 what happened my friends it was a showdown over worship let me make haste with this point and we we're told who went first who went first we are going to erect an altar worship to see which worship is accepted by god it was the false prophet who went forth. My friends, understand this. The false prophet represent in the last days apostate Protestantism. Remember that. We have Ahab, state power. Jezebel, the mother of harlots, the papacy. False prophets, ap her daughters, apostate Protestantism. All right, brothers and sisters. Now notice. Do you know one of the great questions, one of the great themes they are going to explore January 8, 2022 at the convention called the Renewal? <laughs> the great question is, has the cup of iniquity in America full? That is the great question. Look at this, brothers and sisters. One of the questions we will explore at the renewal is, have we reached the fullness of America? Is there a time when the cup of iniquity gets so full that America comes to an end? What will they be studying? But what would they be studying? <laughs> brothers and sisters, here you have people in the world who are going to be studying the close of probation. That's what it means. The cup being full. The close of, a, the, the, the close, get it right, the close of probation for America. And yet, starch, a stark contrast, juxtaposition. Many professed SDAs are so apathetic regarding studying having Bible studies on the close of probation for the United States of America. That's why I believe some of them are very much sincere. Yes, they are. Let me move on, my friends. All right, one more. Based on the biblical template, the fullness of America will arrive when four events converge. And of course, they give what they believe will be those four events to bring to bring the close of probation, the cup being full in the United States of America. Brothers and sisters, who is going to be present? Hmm. It's going to be Ben Carson. Yes, the world-renowned, prominent Dr. Ben Carson, a professed Seventh-day Adventist. My friends, is he going to evangelize those individuals? Or will he simply fit in with the counterfeit movement? Is a question I'm asking. They will be studying America's cup of iniquity. When will it be full? My friends, do you know what we should be giving them? A Bible study on Revelation 14. A Bible study on Revelation chapter 18. May I give you a... a I don't want to say quick. May I give you uh, a brief, succinct overview of what event will bring the close of probation to Americans, my friends? Go with me to Revelation chapter 18. 
The Bible says in verse number four, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Why would you say come out that you do not become partakers of her sins and her plagues? If you were already in there, you should have been partakers of her sins and receive her plagues. But they were in Babylon ignorantly. So when some great event happened, now they have to make a final decision. And if they remain in Babylon, Popery, Babylon, apostate Protestantism, Babylon, worldliness, Babylon, heathen religions, Babylon, okay. If they remain there now, their sins remain. No more repentance. If they remain there now, they receive the plagues. Okay. Which event brings the plagues? It's the mark of the beast. Revelation 14, verse 9, verse 10, chapter 15 of Revelation, verse 1, chapter 16, verse 1 onward. So when the son, the law is enforced, the mark of the beast. We now go with the final call to those in Babylon. Come out now. Come out. Come to Christ's truth. If you remain, you then become partakers of her sins. If you remain, you will then receive the seven last plagues and the second death. Look at verse number five now. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Heaven. Is high above the earth. If you fill a cup, my friends, with, with, with liquid, it that liquid rises to the top. That's what that means. The cup is full, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Verse 6. Reward her even has she rewarded you. And double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup, that's it which she hath filled, filled to her double. And this is speaking about the papacy primarily. And the Sunday law begins in the United States of America. All right, my friends. Notice now, volume 5, page 451. When the Sunday law is enforced, what happens next? Look at the next statement. Same reference. It says, my friends, watch carefully. Watch, so may this apostasy, which apostasy, my friends? Which apostasy? The Sunday law. That's it. So may this apostasy be assigned to us. The limit of God's forbearance is reached. All right. The measure of our nation's iniquity is full. That's it, friends. And the angel of mercy is about to take her flight, never to return. That's it. And friends, Ben Carson is going to be there. <laughs> Look at that, my friends. Front and center, Ben Carson. Circled in white. That's it. That's it, friends. Take a look. brothers and sisters there you have it he's going to be present and the great question is what is he going to be sharing he's on the lineup that's why you see my friends ben carson lines up with the advocates the sunday law advocates i told you david barton michelle bachman they believe the ten commandments sunday worship should be enforced as the law of the land i cover that a plethora of times my friends the playlist is there the death of protestantism the death of republicanism it's below this video right here in the playlist let me get back to this my friends the movement the renewal 
January 8, 2022, they wrote, National sin of America is causing national destruction. What does that sound like? That question should be posed to profess SDAs. What does that statement sound like? National sin will lead to national destruction. Those of you who are alive, what statement comes to your mind, my friends? I'll give it to you. Notice what it says here, friends. America may not be destroyed or cease to exist, but when national sin and rejection of God's law persist, watch carefully, last sentence, God will lift his hand up of protection to allow natural disasters to take place. National sin, they are saying, will lead to national destruction. My friends, the statement is this, national apostasy will lead to national ruin. It's as if they are quoting the spirit of prophecy and the Bible. That's what I'm saying, friends. That's what I'm saying. The movement sounds um, valuable, reasonable, yes, justifiable, but we know it's a counterfeit. And notice the very act they are going to do to stymie the judgments of God is the very act that will bring the seven last plagues, the judgments of God upon the earth. What is that act? Enforcing church institutions by state officials and then prosecute and persecute all Bible dissenters. Look at the statement now, my friends. There it is. There it is, my friends. Evangelism. When pro oh, my friends, when Protestant churches shall unite with a secular power to sustain a false religion for opposing which their ancestors endured the fiercest persecution then would the papal sabbath the papal sabbath sunday sabbath be enforced by the combined authority of church and state there will be a national apostasy which will end only in national ruin hold on there just as i said in john 11 let us crucify christ to preserve our nation hindsight mm -mm. that event brought the destruction of their nation type past tense anti-type modern times we're here brothers and sisters we are here and notice this statement i believe is a nail in a sure place the renewal is based on their ancestors the pilgrims who came to america it's based on their progenitors the pilgrims who came to america and what did that statement say my friends there it is right there a blue words underline they will call for the papal sabbath why to substantiate their ancestors counterfeit movement the first sentence says with rapid steps what does rapid mean with rapid steps, we are approaching this period. National apostasy will end only in national ruin, brothers and sisters. I wish I could say more. I wish I could say more. The end is rapidly upon us. I wish I could, I wish I could say more. And God is allowing the very current events to awaken those who are sincere, keep us aroused, and those who have been sleeping in the first watch second watch third watch it's time to be awakened now in the fourth and final watch okay let me close by saying this it's all about the covenant but their covenant that they say is based on god's ten commandments the same one they said was nailed to the cross has sunday as the fourth and for catholics sunday as the third won't go there right now Okay, friends, but God is coming for those who are faithful to his true covenant. Psalm 50, verse 5, verse 6, God's word says, When Christ bursts atmospheric heavens, what will he say? Gather my saints together, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Which covenant could he be talking about? Hmm? The one he gave to Adam and Eve, the one he gave to the Israelites, the one he gave to the Christian church, the same one, which was simply the one that God spake, the one that God wrote, 
the one which is the great original in the heavenly sanctuary. Yes, brothers and sisters. And Hebrews chapter 10, the Bible says. In Hebrews chapter 10, I want to leave you here. And verse number 16, this is a covenant I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws in their hearts, that my laws in their minds, that they might know them in their minds, in their hearts they might love them. Their sins and iniquity I will remember no more. I'll blot out their sins. Which law could he be talking about? The Ten Commandments, which has the seventh day Sabbath, not the first day of the week, so-called Sabbath. And verse number 19 gives hope. Having therefore, brethren, boldness, come to your high priest, Jesus Christ. He'll give you power to love, to obey. He'll give you power to desire to obey and power to obey. Yes. And verse number 21, draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having your heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and your bodies washed with pure water. Amen. Will you now draw near? Verse number 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise is he faithful yes it doesn't matter what you're going through first corinthians 10 13 my friends there's no temptation taking you but such as is common to man god is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able but he will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it god is faithful brothers and sisters and verse number 24, that's why we have come to midday power surge. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. I want to provoke you today. Yes, I want to agitate, agitate, agitate. I want to provoke, provoke, provoke you unto good works. Good works, you need the love of Jesus Christ in your heart. Go back and read The Desire of Ages, page 83, and you will see practically how to get that love in your heart for Christ. So you might be obedient and how that love may remain in your heart. My friends, it says, with rapid steps, we are approaching this period, brothers and sisters, Hilary Henriquez, my wife, said, The Lord is coming. Are you ready? The Lord is coming. Are we ready? Yes, my friends. It's time to get others ready. Send in your prayer requests. It's time for aggressive, effective evangelism. Yes, my friends. The Lord is coming. And the protest must continue. Do you know there are some people we will never get a chance to meet? Yet we have other persons who profess to be SDAs, who rub shoulder with such people. I wonder, are they evangelizing or are they compromisers, men pleasers, betrayers, deniers? The Lord is coming. Are we ready? The protest continues. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God and in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for thee. The Lord is coming Let's go.
promises of God all are true. Jesus bought your life on Calvary's mountain, and soon he will come again for you. The Lord is coming, are you? Coming, are you ready? Would your heart be right?